Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. Today let's solve find the minimum and maximum number of nodes between critical points. So long description, ain't nobody got time for that. So we're just gonna go straight to the example. So if you were to take these and draw them on like a chart that looks something like this, you would notice that there are local minimums and maximums. So this is kind of just like math that you probably learned in school. Now, what we want to do is ignore the endpoints because as you can see, this is a local min, this is a local max. And the reason it's considered a local min basically is because its neighbors left and right are both larger than it. So that's it. Its neighbor left and right neighbor determine that this is a minimum. And we know alternatively that this is a maximum because its left neighbor and its right neighbor are smaller than it. So that's literally it. That's how we know if something is a minimum or a maximum. Now, as you can see, the left and right endpoints, they don't have two neighbors. So how do we determine if they are minimums or maximums? Well, we don't. Thankfully, in this problem, they clarified that the endpoints don't count. The second example kind of illustrates that better. What we're ultimately trying to do is among all of these critical points, only the valid ones, of course, so this one, this one, and this one, among all of them, we want to see what is the largest distance between two of the points, any two of the points. Obviously, we would pick the leftmost critical point and the rightmost critical point and compute the distance between them. So this is the max distance. This is one of the things that we're trying to determine. What's the max distance between any two critical points? The other thing is what's the minimum distance between two any critical points? Obviously, we're probably not gonna choose two critical points that aren't even adjacent to each other. We're not gonna try to compute this distance because we probably just need to look at adjacent critical points. Like between these two, the distance is two and between these two critical points the distance is one among those two which one was smaller this one so that's the minimum distance that's the other thing that we're looking for once we have the minimum distance and the maximum distance we're going to return them in the form of an array that looks like this that's why in this second example the first is one because that was the minimum distance and the second was three because this is the max distance okay so now you finally understand the problem and how do we solve it? Well, one way would be just turn the linked list into an array. While we're at it, might as well filter out all of the non-critical points, right? Just give me the critical points. Those are the only ones I care about. So then when you do that, you realize that you don't actually care about the points. Like one, five, doesn't matter. The positions are what matter. So like the index, this is index zero, one, two, three, four, five and six. So critical point here is at index two, critical point here, four, critical point here is at five. Once you have this, you can pretty easily arrive at the result over here. Just look at every adjacent pair, compute the difference between them, and then try to minimize that. You'll see that this is obviously the minimum. It's one. Getting the maximum is even easier. Just take the leftmost and the rightmost and get the difference between them. It's three in this case. So that would work but obviously creating an extra array is linear space. It's also linear time, that's good, it's very time efficient, but what about the space? Do we actually need to put this into the form of an array? Can't we just solve this by traversing the linked list? Yes, we can. Let me show you how. The way I'm gonna solve this is with three pointers. You technically don't need three pointers. You could probably get away with two, maybe even one if you're good but I'm gonna use three pointers because why not? It's not gonna change the space complexity. The space complexity is still gonna be constant. We're gonna have a current pointer. We're gonna have a next and a previous pointer as well. Why did I start the current pointer at the second node? Because this one we know for sure is not critical. Same with the last. So we're gonna iterate like this until the next pointer is here and then we're done. We only want cur to go through these nodes. We don't care about the endpoints. Next, you might be able to guess is we just wanna check is this node critical? Because there are two things that we're trying to determine. What we're trying to do is find the first critical node. We're gonna have like a variable. So let me just add some underscores here. This is gonna be a variable. It's gonna be the index though. Like it's gonna store the index of the first critical node. 
Why we're doing that is because we're also going to find the last critical node. And of course, we can then compute the distance to find the max distance. And we already talked about how we can determine if a node is critical. It needs to either be smaller than both of its neighbors or larger. Now, the other thing we want to do is obviously get the minimum distance. So at the same time, we're going to be storing a second index as well. It's going to be the previous critical nodes index. So wherever we are, like at this point, for example, when our current pointer is at this node, we're going to determine that this is a critical node. And we're also going to determine, well, we're going to have stored the index of the previous critical node, which was here. So then we'll have the indexes of these two. We'll compute the difference and then we'll try to like minimize that distance and store it in like a separate variable. At the end of this, we should have the max and minimum distances and then we can return them. Now it's technically possible, I guess I didn't mention, that there might not be a max or min distance. And that would pretty much only happen if there aren't two critical nodes in the input. So in that case, by the way, we would return negative one for the max and min distance. Since we're just iterating over the input list, the time complexity is gonna be linear. Okay, so let's see if we can get through this without any bugs. So first, just gonna assign the previous and current pointer, and then I'm gonna create the next pointer on the next line. I'll just do current.next. And we'll have a couple variables for the min distance and max distance, which is ultimately what we're gonna be returning. So something like this, and we'll initialize the min distance to infinity because we're trying to minimize it. And with the max distance, we'll do the opposite and make it negative infinity. Next, we're going to iterate over the linked list. So while the next pointer is non-null, because we don't care about the last node, we're gonna iterate. And I'll fill in the easy part first. We're gonna be shifting the pointers, of course. Shifting all three of them should be pretty easy, just like this. Previous will be set to cur, cur will be set to next, and next will be set to next dot next. But now for the actual logic. First, let's have some variables to store. What was the previous critical index? We'll set it as zero for now. Same with first critical index, also set that to zero. And I didn't mention this, but we are gonna have a pointer to tell us what is the current index. It'd be nice for us to have that. So I'm gonna say index is initially one. It's gonna be the index of cur. I think we could probably set it to zero and it will also be fine anyway, but whatever. So another thing in this loop, we're gonna have that incrementing by one each time. Okay, now for the actual code. What do we care about? We just wanna know, is the current node critical? So I'm actually gonna write a helper function for that cause it's gonna be simple, but it's kind of a lot of code. So here I'm gonna create a function called critical. It's gonna take in three nodes, the previous node, the current node, and the next node, and it's gonna determine if the current node is critical. Again, it's not too bad. Just check if cur is smaller than its neighbor. So something like this, cur is less than previous and it's less than the next value. You might be wondering, how am I doing this? Like, how am I doing two comparisons? Well, Python allows you to do that. So either this is the case, or I'm gonna copy this and just change around the signs, or current value is greater than the left and right neighbor. So if either of these is true, let's go ahead and return true. Okay, now that we have that in this loop, we're gonna use it, we're gonna check. If the current nodes are critical, like this current node is critical, let's do something. We want to possibly update the min and max distance. How do we compute it? Well, we're gonna need these variables. So let's check if first critical index has already been assigned to something that is not zero. Zero wouldn't be valid anyway, remember, because the first node in the linked list does not count anyway. So we'll just check, is it non-zero? If first crit node index is non-zero, then we know it's already been assigned. That means we've already found the first critical node before, and now we found another critical node. We haven't changed this variable yet, so this means that we now have at least two critical nodes. So how do we update the max distance? It's not too difficult. Just take i, the current index, and subtract first critical index. You might wonder, well, don't we need to maximize it? Don't we need to make sure that this is maximized? Actually, no, because the current index, i, is always gonna be growing. The first crit index is only gonna be reassigned once. It's never gonna change after that. So this will always be the max distance. It's always gonna be increasing. So that's good. Now, the second thing is 
let's update the min distance. So you might think let's create like a separate if statement for that. Let's check if previous crit index is non-zero, then let's do kind of the same thing. But actually you can keep it in the same if statement because if we found at least one critical index, then the previous is also, of course, going to be non-zero. So here we'll say min distance is equal to the minimum of either itself and the current difference. So I minus previous crit index. There you go. Now, we also want to actually like assign these at some point, at least. The easy one is this previous critical index. Every time we find a critical node, we're going to update previous crit index because why wouldn't we? This is the most recent one. So we'll assign this to I here outside of this if statement. The other one, though, is first crit index. When do we assign this? Well, either it's already been assigned or it has not been assigned, in which case down here, uh, let me just rename this to first crit index. We're going to set it a single time like this to I. So now we are almost done, but there's one catch. Min distance and max distance are infinity and negative infinity. So before we return out here, let's check if min distance is still equal to infinity, we should probably set it to negative one because that means we never found a valid one. And since we know they're both going to either be a negative one or not, we can at the same time put max distance over here and set that to negative one if you want to as well. Well, you kind of need to with the way we've coded this up. But there's actually one little thing that you can do to condense this a tiny bit. You can get rid of this line because we know that the max distance actually doesn't even have like a max function called around it. So we can actually just initialize the max distance to negative one. And if it ever gets reassigned, then that's great. If not, then that's fine as well. So this is the entire code. It's quite long. It's a lot longer than usual. I don't think it's crazy complicated for how long it is, but it's really, really easy to make a mistake, especially with linked list problems like the pointer manipulation and all that stuff. So just try to be careful about that. But as you can see on the left, it does work. It's pretty efficient, especially memory wise. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.